Welcome to part two of my River Rocks Paint Along video set. This is the skills exercise. In this video, we'll review and practice some of the skills and techniques used to create the painting River Rocks. To start the exercise, I've taken a quarter sheet of watercolor paper and mounted it to my board. And I've divided it in half with a piece of masking tape and then on the right side, I divided it from top to bottom in thirds with masking tape. You don't have to be exact, just approximate the half and the thirds and you'll be fine. To begin, I'm going to make a, a simple line drawing that just suggests three rock shapes. So it's nothing complex. And I'm going to make the same drawing in all three squares. Don't worry about them being exact. So create a little overlap and just make it just some simple oval type shapes. So one of the things that we're going to do in this exercise is create texture. So the first technique we're going to use is masking fluid. And I've dipped this toothbrush in the masking fluid and I'm just splattering it on the surface. Don't worry too much if you get uh, some large drops. That'll just add to the variety of the texture. and. Um, you have some of that occurs in some of these rocks. So I, I kind of bend back the uh, bristles of the brush and splatter it, and then I tap it against my hand and try to get more out of it and splatter it. And when you hit it against your hand, you get some of the larger uh, droplets. And just make sure you try and give some good coverage to all three blocks. One thing I'll say about masking fluid, it's kind of messy, when it, especially when it's wet. It's hard to clean up. And if you get it on a hard surface, just let it dry and then you can just rub it right up. If it gets in cloth or something, it's a little bit more difficult. So let the masking fluid that you apply dry completely. And then we'll start working on mixing neutral grays. So we're going to use three color combinations to mix neutral grays. The first is ultramarine blue and burnt sienna. So my, my objective right here is to take equal parts, basically, of these, or the, the right ratio that gives me a neutral gray. So you can say, see now that I've mixed these together that I'm getting a neutral gray. And we'll leave that mark right there. So if I take that neutral gray and add some more burnt sienna to it, now I get a neutral gray that's on the warm side leaning towards a burnt sienna. And if I add more ultramarine blue to the mixture, now I'm getting a neutral gray that's leaning more towards the ultramarine on a cooler side. Now I can take a much more concentrated mixture of the two and I'm getting a neutral gray but it's going to be a much darker value because I have uh, less water and more pigment in the, the mixture. So you just kind of have to go back and forth with the colors until you, you find the spot where it's, it's really neutral. So you can see I've got a dark valued gray along with the, the lighter middle value uh, leaning towards the warm and leaning towards the cool. So I'm going to clean my palette here I use a porcelain palette that uh, I really like and one of the things I like is it cleans up very nice and doesn't stain. So now we're ready for our next mixture which is going to be cerulean blue and again burnt sienna. Now these two mixed together are going to give me a, a neutral gray but it's not going to be quite um, is, is strong as the ultramarine mixture 
because the cerulean blue isn't quite as potent. But again, you can see I'm adding a little bit more burnt sienna. I get it towards the warm side. I take more cerulean blue and now I get a, a cool gray and it's a bluish gray. And as we paint some of these rocks, there's quite a variety of tones when you really look at rocks. Sometimes we think of them as just these these gray stones, but really there, there's turquoise and blues and greens and reds and browns. There's just a, a variety of color in the, the rocks that we're painting. And here I'm increasing the concentration again and it's giving me the darker value gray. So now I'm going to clean my palette one more time. And I know that there's many who, who don't really like a palette such as this. They like to leave their paint on their, their palette literally for years, which is fine. Everybody has to find the, the, the approach that works for them. This is what I prefer. I like to have a nice clean mixing surface. And I'll clear it several times through my painting process. So now I'm taking Viridian and Alizarin Crimson. And I'm going to need a little bit more Viridian in that mixture. And, and these two, when I mix together, together, it's a very delicate balance on which how much pigment shifts it one way or the other. Again, neutral grain just adds a touch of one color or the other, and it really starts to swing quickly to the green or to the red side. But you can see that I've got a ratio there that's going to give me a nice neutral gray. And now if I add more red, it's going to give me a, a more of a red tone gray. And if I add the green, it's going to give me a green tone. You can do the same thing with a phthalo green. Um, it's going to give you a nice neutral. And of course the reason that we're getting these neutrals is we're talking about colors, uh, combinations that uh, are on opposite sides of the color wheel. So here we're mixing the Viridian Green and next the Alizarin Crimson. It's going to take a bit more green in that mixture. And you can see now it's starting to go towards gray and that's going to give a, a nice deep um, valued gray. And this is something that you could use to create like a nice charcoal colored stone uh, in your painting. So those are the three color combinations that we're going to be dealing with. So this paper is divided into three sections. And what we're going to do is we're going to take the three color combinations that we just mixed on the palette. We're going to put those mixtures on the left side of the paper and then to the right each one's going to have its own little mini composition. So I'm beginning here with the the two base colors off the palette of ultramarine blue and burnt sienna. And what we're going to do is we're going to practice mixing our neutrals and then we're going to take these tones and we're going to move them over to the composition and start making shapes and textures that resemble the stones that would be in, in the painting that we're going to do. So I've put the middle uh, band down and it's a neutral gray and there's my uh, neutral that's leaning more towards the blue side and I will comment that I'm using a, a half inch flat brush here. I didn't list that on the material list. You can use a round brush. Um, either will work fine but for illustration purposes, this flat brush gives a nice paint stripe to, to pick up on the video. So there's my uh, warm gray. And now what I'm going to do is on each one of these, we're going to paint the middle shape first and then dry it so we can get nice clean edges on the three shapes. So here in the middle, I've got this, uh, the middle neutral, the, the neutral gray that's really um, not leaning either way. And you can see some of that texture coming through as I apply this because we have the um, masking fluid on the paper. 
So it's going to take a little patience with this exercise, but take the time and practice mixing your, your neutrals. And so now with this other shape dry, we're going to start applying uh, a cooler neutral to the right, and then we're going to make uh, a, a warmer neutral to the left. So here I'm adding some water and I'm trying to gradate that wash a little bit. Practice as you do this exercise on gradating your wash and your colors. And when you get a puddle like that, all you have to do is take your brush and a damp brush, touch it to it, and it'll pick that water up. So next, I'm going to take some uh, uh, of this, this color mixture that's leaning more towards the warm side, and we're going to do the same thing. And now that I've got uh, the, the tones applied to both of those shapes, I want to try and create a little bit more texture in here. So we're going to explore just a couple different ways to make some texture. So I'm taking some salt. This is a coarse salt. And I'm sprinkling it on the, the shape to the left and the shape to the right. The shape in the middle won't do anything to you because it's already dry. But you can kind of see how... Uh, that created some texture there and you'll see some time lapse as we move through this video uh, to for the sake of time um, and, and I've taken that that concentrated mixture now and I've made a very dark valued gray just to put there as a reference point for this exercise and I'll do that on all three of these Now we're going to do the same thing with the cerulean blue and the burnt sienna. So there's my cerulean and now we're going to put down a mark of burnt sienna and then we're going to put down the, the neutral gray uh, mixture. And you can start to see some variety in these neutrals that are being created by these different different colors. So really so far we've used three different colors, ultramarine blue, burnt sienna, and cerulean blue. And although they're subtle, you can see the differences in the tones that you can create with these. And now if you can imagine those uh, those colors and that variety and what you can do painting the, the rock scene we're going to paint. You can see how this, this ability to mix these grays is, is going to be key to, to painting this river rock scene. So the middle shape's been painted and dried and now I'm coming in as I did on the other one with a cooler mixture to the right and then I'll come in with a warmer mixture to the left and I'm working with a little bit darker values here than I was on the first one. Um, I've got a little bit more pigmentation in the mixture and less water. So there's kind of a nice uh, bluish charcoal gray. And next I'm going to come in with the um, the mixture that's leaning more towards the burnt sienna is going to give us a warm tone to, to put down. So I put that down. I'm going to take some uh, some water now. I'm going to try and gradate that tone out a little bit. Now on this second set of rocks we're going to try something different here to create some texture. The the middle dry rock is or shape is dry and the ones on the right and left are are still pretty wet. And I'm hitting these with a hair dryer just slightly. I want to take uh, some of the water out of content out, but I want to leave them wet. Uh, I still have a sheen on these. And what I'm going to do now is I'm going to take a, a spray bottle that's got kind of a coarse spray and I'm just going to lightly spray spritz the shapes on the right and the left and because they're still damp 
you're going to get some uh, nice textural qualities develop and you can kind of see that now um, you can't do it when it's super wet it just uh, the, the the spray just goes right into the puddle but when it's uh, just still has a sheen on it but it's still damp but not quite dry it starts to give a nice texture um, into the to the paint and uh, we still have that texture underneath from the masking fluid which we haven't removed yet so those those are going to work together to give a nice texture for these rock shapes so now we're moving on to uh, the last color combination here and this is the viridian and the alizarin crimson and we're going to do a, a, the same thing here to create our neutral stripes, our neutral bands. So there's a, a nice neutral and, and again that's a nice tone that could be used for a really nice charcoal colored stone in the riverbed. Now leaning towards the green maybe a little hard to see in the video but you can kind of see that green tint and then we'll come in with a mixture that's leaning a little bit more towards the red side towards the alizarin crimson and put that band down here I'm going to put the dark valued band on this mixture and in a minute I'm gonna have to come back around and get that the dark band on that second one I, I bypassed that without putting that down so we'll come back around to that in a minute um, but right now we're in our third composition and just as the others were applying our um, neutral gray here in the middle and I'm going to dry it Now that's dry and I'm going to come in with the the gray that's leaning towards the green and again the reason I want to dry that middle shape is I want to have nice clean edges between these three rock shapes if I didn't they would bleed together and they'd be soft edges which isn't what I want here there's a place for soft edges but that's not the, the effect I'm trying to achieve here uh, I want to have some somewhat clean uh, edges on these rocks so I have the green tone there and now I'm going to get the uh, the tone that's leaning more towards the, the alizarin crimson on the left and the brush I've been using all along is a silver black velvet jumbo round small so it's not a teeny tiny brush it's not huge but it's a, it's a nice size wash brush and it does a nice job at putting down these types of glazes so if you use a similar type of brush it would work uh, very well in this exercise and the painting. So here on this one we're gonna take some of that salt we still have a, a fairly wet surface and we're gonna use the spray so on, on this set of uh, shapes we're gonna have those three different techniques uh, working to create texture the masking fluid, the salt, and then the coarse uh, spritz with the uh, spray bottle and so when we dry that and then we end up taking the masking fluid off we're going to have some nice texture here I'm going to go back and I'm going to put that mark that I overlooked so let's take a, a close-up look at some of the texture here and we've yet to take off the masking fluid but you can see that some of the effects that have been created by the spritz and by the salt and you can see the the different color neutral tones that we have there also while you're looking at that now I'm going to take my kneaded rubber eraser it's a rubber cement pickup eraser so you just rub it over the top and it'll pick up the, the dried masking fluid this is something like I said if you if you do get some of this uh, masking fluid on something that's not on your other than your drawing or whatever um, you can take this pickup eraser and it'll pick it up off a table or chair or light or whatever you've got it on 
um, same as it does the paper. And now that we've removed that masking fluid, you can see now we have some nice white highlights in there. And uh, sometimes if I was painting this, I'd probably leave that masking fluid on a little bit longer. And so I'd get some whiter whites. But in this exercise, I, I wanted to get that off to show you the, the variety of texture. And then we're going to start painting in around some of these rocks. While I'm calling them rocks, they're just some shapes we made, but we're given the 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 suggestion that we're we were looking at a rock here. Now we're going to take some darker value tones, and in each of these, the dark tone that I'm applying has been made with the mixture to the left. So at the end, when we're done, we'll have three little compositions of rock shapes, and. To, uh, to the left we'll have the, the colors that we made the composition with. So I've got uh, my small to, to, to medium sized brush here and I'm just applying this this darker neutral wash in between these shapes. It kind of gives a suggestion that there's some ground there. So I've dried that and I'm going to get a little deeper value on these stones and this is where I say in, in, in the painting I'm going to leave that um, masking fluid on a bit longer so we have some a bit more of that whiter texture coming through after we take the mask off. But I've put kind of a shadow tone there and gradated that to give some dimension, more dimension to that rock shape. And we're going to do the same thing. Uh, with this other one. Now these glazes that I'm putting on are all mixed with the colors to the left, the ultramarine blue and the burnt sienna. So this is where we're gradating our value. And you can you can be uh, well we're, we're staying with the, the colors here on, on uh, to the left you could very easily on some of these washes mix in another tone, another color and gradate those colors together just as we're doing with our value. In fact, it's a, it's a good technique to give yourself lively washes. For instance, if I were painting this stone in a painting, I might I'd take a stronger blue or a little bit burnt sienna or maybe a yellow ochre and just charge that wash a little bit. And um, I'm going to have a video out soon that's talking about charging your washes. It, it brings life to your color mixtures. So I'm taking a darker valued mixture, still with the ultramarine blue and burnt sienna, and uh, giving the indication of some dark shadows right on the underside of the rocks and in between the rocks, and I gradate that out. So I've got that in and around some of those rocks, and now I'm taking a little bit of that darker tone and I'm just splattering with a dark value to give some more texture. And that helps uh, complement some of the lighter uh, textures that we have with some of the other things we've done. And I'm going to hit that with a very fine mist spray bottle uh, to help diffuse that a little bit and soften the, the splatter so it's not quite as harsh. Here I'm going to put a little bit deeper shadow, a little deeper wash. And I'm going to gradate that out, try and give a little bit more volume to that shape. Here I'm using a, a quill brush that I like to use to put a little detail in. And I've got my darkest value yet. And I'm just touching that dark value right where these rocks come together where it might create very dark park pockets of value um, as these shapes intersect.
this does get repetitive, so I'm going to speed this up a little bit as we move through these next two compositions. But we're taking a similar approach where we're using the colors on the left, the cerulean blue and burnt sienna, and starting to put dark values in between these rock shapes. I've slowed this back down to normal speed. There's one thing I want to point out. In, in this composition, we're working with the Viridian and the Alizarin Crimson. Now, those two being on opposite color, uh, opposite sides of the color wheel, not only um, do they mix uh, neutral gray because of that, but they also uh, create some vibrancy between one another. Um, if you put a neutral that's influenced by one, next to the other, they kind of set each other off. So in this glaze, it's hard to pick up, but right now the, the dark value that I'm putting down is leaning more towards the red because I'm positioning it near that rock shape that's got more of a green tint. And if you can use those uh, complements to help um, make, one, make uh, one or the other stand out, and especially if you were using bright versions of some of these colors. If you were to take a, uh, a neutral that's leaning towards that green and put it by a bright alizarin crimson, it would really set that alizarin crimson off because it's its complement. And you can kind of see that right now as they've dried. You can see that red against the green and the dark value and the green against the red rock. Um, it's kind of it's very subtle, but it's there. So just something to be aware of. Here I'm putting on a very dark dark value wash. And I want to bring a little bit more texture into that. So I'm going to hit it with uh, the coarse salt. And then I'm going to uh, spray it lightly with the, the coarse spray of the, the water bottle to create some texture. So that's the exercise, and to do a quick recap, we got some experience uh, using some big brushes, and uh, we experimented with a couple different techniques to create texture. We used the coarse salt, poured onto damp paper. We used the coarse spray uh, to spritz onto damp paper and create that textural effect. And we also splattered some masking fluid onto the paper with a toothbrush. And that gave an interesting effect. And um, those are a couple of the objectives we had. And the other one was mixing some of these neutrals. So we used this variety, uh, limited variety of colors to get quite a variety of neutral grays. So just you, gray isn't just one color and from dark to light. There's, there's lots of variations. You can see how many uh, different mixtures we can get and of course with with all of these the the intensity of the color and the value can be very in many different ways so this just scratches the surface on what's possible with these pigments and we've got our, our little mini compositions here so we we uh, as we peel this tape back you can you can see our little compositions here and this is where the artistic uh, interpretation comes we didn't render uh, these little rocks shapes from a photo. We didn't even use a photo. We just drew some shapes and started painting on them. Uh, but it's an interesting exercise and these are some of the techniques that are used in the painting river rocks to create the the complete painting. So here's the painting river rocks and you can see uh, very similar in some of the, the approach uh, to, to getting these rock shapes. And again, that's why I thought this is a very good subject for this paint along because it's not a very complex drawing subject. Um, but you can get some very nice effects uh, with some of the, the techniques that we've experimented with. So that concludes part two, the exercise of this paint along. And I hope you've had the patience to stick with it 
and work your way through this and I think you'll find it beneficial when trying to complete the finished painting. If you need information about my materials, you should be able to find it on the studio page of my website, rsirwitzart.com. If you have specific questions, you can email me at contactrsirwitzart at gmail.com. Thanks for watching.